It's 4 p.m. here in Harare's Barbers capital. Welcome to ZTN News Blitz, our top stories. Fire destroys property worth thousands in Harare. Zimbabwe reverses school examination fee increase. Coronavirus, car manufacturers feel the pinch. And in sport, Coventry welcomes 27 national teams in sports tourism drive. Now, property worth thousands of dollars was destroyed earlier today in downtown Harare when a fire broke out. The fire was due to an electrical fault, and when the city's fire department arrived at the scene of the accident, shops and boutiques had been destroyed. Fire Department Assistant Divisional Head Herbert Tipita spoke to ZTN. Um, when, when the fire brigade arrived here, we found that the roof had already collapsed and the whole building was alive. But the first initial thing that didn't go right was that the fire brigade was given a wrong address. We were given the addresses out beyond and the Cameroon Street. Then upon coming reverting to the correct address, we found it was all alive. Uh, we are still being fine with patients to really ascertain what, what, what is the cause of the fire. Zimbabwe has reversed examination registration fees for both O-level and A-level subjects. Recently, the Zimbabwe Schools Examination Council pegged the new fees at 190 and 351 Zimbabwean dollars each. An ordinary level student now has to pay $15 and uh, for a single subject, and an advanced level student will pay 26 Zimbabwean dollars for a single subject. Primary and Secondary Education Minister Kane Matema announced the reversal this morning. Following the publication of the 2020 public examination fees, it has been found necessary to carry out further consultations. While the examination fees that were published are based on the actual cost of each examination, the Minister of Primary and Secondary Education would like to inform parents and guardians that following further representations, the recently released circular on the 2020 examination fees has been cancelled with immediate effect. New fees will be announced after further consultations have been made with all the relevant stakeholders. Zimbabwe's parliament is set to sign a new five-year partnership with United States Agency for International Development towards capacitating members of parliament to carry out their mandate. Parliament and USAID have been working together for the past 20 years, but the partnership lapsed in July last year. USAID Mission Director for Zimbabwe, Stephanie Funk, said her organization will continue its humanitarian work in Zimbabwe. Funk today paid a courtesy call on National Assembly Speaker Jacob Mudenda. Year partnership with the Parliament of Zimbabwe. We worked on strengthening the internal processes in Parliament, the outreach to constituents, uh, the legislative process, um, and we've, uh, we've had a very successful program. Um, the program came to an end in July of last year, in 2019, and um, we are now about to go forward to develop a new program. So we spoke with the speaker about his priorities and they will be incorporated into our request for applications and we look forward um, in June to signing a new agreement. Jaguar Land Rover bosses admitted they have been flying car parts into the country in suitcases due to difficulties in supply from uh, difficulties in su supply from, the chi from China caused by the outbreak of the coronavirus. The UK's biggest car maker, which produces around 400,000 motors a year, has three vehicle manufacturing plants in the UK, all of which rely on components delivered from China. The UK car maker boss Ralph Spur said the factories could run out of parts in two weeks due to the strangled supply following the outbreak of the deadly virus. 
Move on to the world of sport, where Zimbabwe's Youth Sport, Arts and Recreation Minister, Kirsty Coventry, says the upcoming African Sporting Shooting Championships and short back ATU Triathlon Africa Cup to be held in Zimbabwe are part of the country's sports tourism drive. 17 countries, including Zimbabwe, will compete in the shooting championships starting in Victoria Falls next week, and nine countries will join Zimbabwe in the Trotbeck ATU Triathlon Africa Cup. Coventry addressed the media at her offices in Harare today about the upcoming events. This is extremely exciting uh, for Zimbabwe. This is what we want to see more of. Um, it not just allows for our national federations to grow with experience, but it allows our athletes to grow as well. And it also gives our junior athletes an opportunity to see and to witness uh, world-class athletes at their best and on home turf. So with uh, both the triathlon and, and shooting events, um, and with those numbers of countries coming to visit Zimbabwe, this is also showing us and showcasing to us the power that sport has in terms of adding value to the GDP. In news just received, European-based football agent Ellen Chiwenga says she will contest in the next football association elections. If she wins the Ziffa polls, she will become the first female president of the association. She has seen her profile in the game rising in the past few years following her participation in European football events. Jose Mourinho leads Tottenham against RB Lipsburg in the UEFA Champions League last 16 hoping to qualify for the quarterfinals with a London-based side. The Portuguese trainer has won Europe's premier club competition twice with FC Porto and Inter Milan. In another UEFA Champions League game tonight, Atlanta hosts Valencia in the first leg of the round of 16. That's all we had on ZTN News Bits. Join us again tomorrow at 10 a.m. For more news, visit ztn.co.zw and our other social media platforms. Thank you for watching.